thank you so much for your willingness to come out and chat with us tonight. Um, and formally and officially on behalf of AMAC and the entire community we have here, welcome to Atlanta, sir. Thank you very much. For sure. Um, it's That's quite a move coming from JFK. Um, so talk a little bit about that and your role as GM here in Atlanta. How does it differ from, uh, from that of JFK? Well, it's going to snow on Saturday in New York. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, a little rain, a little wind here. Uh, I'm very comfortable with that. Um, <laughs> New York is, uh, let's start with this. New York is an incredibly diverse place. There are 85 airlines that fly into JFK. We have, we have around 30. Um, but it is an international airport. And diversity and inclusion and workforce and everything about JFK is about that. If you go to JFK, there's, you'll go into a terminal and there will be people there from around the world working. Because if you have an airplane that comes in from Beijing, Doha, Paris, Frankfurt, Switzerland, all these places, all these languages need to be spoken in that airport. And that gives me a perspective that I think is important here in Atlanta because it opens your eyes to inclusion. It is one world. We are one people. And that is how Kennedy operated. I was there for almost seven years. And that is how Atlanta operates. Hartsfield Jackson is about that. It is about the people that surround the airport and who work there. And that is key and close to my heart. So there's a very kind symmetry to the two, but they are also very, very different business models, airports. And, and we'll get into that, I think, but possibly a little later. But the transition, um, New York is very aggressive. Um, I will tell you, you all are crazy <laughs> because if you get dropped off at the airport or you're picking up a ride or crossing to the parking garage, you have a crosswalk and you all are texting with a bag, not looking, knowing that the cars are going to stop. In New York, you would be run over within three feet of the curb, okay? There is no two ways about it. You guys would be flattened, all right? <laughs> so um, I can't believe it is that polite. Um, I'm also impressed, I'll digress slightly. Um, I live in Midtown and I put my blinker on and I'm on 85 heading north and I wanna get over to the exit at Peachtree Street or Pine Street and people let me in. <laughs> how, how does that happen? I, I don't know, but I am thrilled to be here in Atlanta. The city is great. The people are great. It is growing, it is lively, and it is not a place where I think, when I see people, they smile. There's opportunity here. In New York, people, I think, are really just trying to get by. There are many people just trying to get by. In Atlanta, there are people trying to get ahead. And I think that is a key piece of what makes Atlanta so great. And it makes it such a pleasure to work in because everybody wants to get ahead. Not just get by, but get ahead. I'm sorry. No, I didn't even great. talk about the airport, but I'm sorry. No, that's great. And we appreciate that you enjoy our Southern hospitality. Ah. Um, you spoke a little bit about um, operations and, and various kind of business models. You touched on that a little bit. Yeah. And um, the differences perhaps between JFK and Atlanta. With a complex like the Atlanta airport, as big as it is, as busy as it is, as much as there is going on, what are your guiding principles that kind of keep you from being distracted by one thing or another that helps you kind of set the path forward for uh, the people that report to you and, and the operation in general? Good question, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really, um, I have to focus on two things, well, three things. The first I have to focus on is safety of that airport and the safety of our passengers and the safety of our employees. So that is the number one focus because at Hartsfield-Jackson, 
if people don't feel safe, they won't be there. So safety is number one. Security, obviously, we've had some, there's some incidents each airport. We had a jet skier get over our fence at Kennedy that has all kinds of sensors and almost made it to the terminal. People have jumped over the fence here. Um, there's been the famous bomber on the, in Atlanta a few years back. So security is also very, very key. But my major focus here in Atlanta is the staff. My staff that Mayor Bottoms has blessed me with. And to take care of them, to look after them, to ensure that they have places to grow and go forward. Because if the staff, I'm, I'm one person of a group of 1,200, and the staff is what makes the business. I have great people here. I have Chili, I have Paul, I have Myrna, I have Walter. <laughs> there. These, guys, these people are what are the fiber of Atlanta Hartsfield, and they are the people that you all are doing business with, and they are the people that are pushing the growth of the airport, and they are the people that are facilitating what Hartsfield Jackson is. And I can't thank you all enough, and most of all, for coming out to hear me talk some more. So thank you. And Valerie. I'm sorry, Valerie. Um, so let, let's pivot a little bit into kind of the, the history of DBE here in Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta, as we all know, has a rich history of inclusion, um, in large part started by Maynard Jackson, I think, in 1973, Three. and then implemented in 1974 and in a lot of ways has kind of set the template um, nationally on what inclusionary programs should look like. So kind of walking in or stepping into those footsteps, if, if I may, um, you know, is, is a hefty role. What does that, what does that mean to you? Oh, okay. So what, what that means to me is there's a tremendous foundation DBE here. It's, it's here. It's a foundation. And that need foundation, when you plan a, when you build a foundation, you probably want to continue to have that grow. And Hartsfield Jackson, I when you look at, at the the surroundings or the circumference of the airport, inclusion is everywhere. It is everywhere. So there's a tremendous base layer that is there. Can we continue to improve? Absolutely. Mayor, Mayor Jackson set the bar, set the, he, start, he started digging the foundation and it has been built to this point that we see today. But the airport needs to represent the community that it lives in. And I think we're, we're, we're there, we're close, we're getting there, but that opportunity to be there and reflect the community that surrounds the airport is what is key and what it needs to be my focus when it comes to DBE is to continue to drive those statistics, those jobs, those opportunities, those training opportunities, everything we do and what AMAC does to ensure that we give the tools to the people that, remember what I said, not, they don't want to get by, they want to get ahead. I want to get those tools to the people that want to get ahead so they can participate in this great city of Atlanta, in this great state of Georgia, and continue to grow everything. So it is quite a responsibility to watch what is here and to ensure that we continue to throw our net further and further out to capture the people that want the chance. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Um, and I know, you know, you, you've, you've been at Hartsfield now? Uh, uh, three and a half months. Three and a half months, okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll take it easy. Yeah. Still, no, please, but, go ahead. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you think about ways to continue to support DBEs, and there's a lot, you know, talking to the community, there's a lot of different opinions on, on what some new tools might be. Um, if I were to raise one, for example, uh, financing. I'm starting out as a DBE, I know, you know, my firm, um, when we started out, it was very tough to secure financing, not having a track record and not having, you know, certain um, collateral. Do you think that that is, that is uh, something that an airport 
can have a part or impact in with respect to financing for, for new DBEs? So, so my, my opinion of that is my answer to you, unfortunately, I don't believe we should be in the financing business. But I do believe there are facilities like Invest Atlanta and other places that the city has and other corporations have and banks have and programs. And Valerie, if, if you know some things that I don't know, please, please jump in here. But my, my position is we are airport operators. We are here to drive the business and the economy that will generate those jobs and generate those contracts and generate those businesses. I think there are other people that need to work on the financing piece. We have a pot of money that is very fenced. Our revenue needs to stay on that airport. Um, but can Councilman Westmoreland, I think he's here. If the council wants to take on financing and do those kinds of things, thank you. Um, but uh, my opinion is the airport really needs to stay within its fence and um, be the engine that it is to create the opportunity that I think we are. I don't think we're the financing arm to get into that financing business. And I can get, I'll get into that maybe on another question. If not, I will close. Uh, I'll get to that point. I'll, I'll get into that because I feel very strongly about the financing at the airport. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, when, when we look at the kind of uh, procurement side, the contracting side, I know our mayor has done a lot in the way of increasing transparency, increasing efficiency. Um, it's such that these opportunities are easier to access and, and um, pursue. Can you talk a little bit about some of those initiatives and what the impact will be for I absolutely for can if you let me put my glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> because there's quite a few of them, and I, I want to be, I want to be inclusive. I, I think my mic is, so excuse me. Um, I am a pilot, former pilot. I haven't flown in a while. I have excellent distance vision, but I can't read anything anymore, so I need these. I apologize. So I have a very good friend. I'm a retired Navy commander, and uh, Mayor Bottoms hired myself and a gentleman named <clears throat> Lieutenant Colonel David Wilson II, or third. And um, he is a retired Lieutenant Colonel Air Force Procurement Officer. So between our military background, uh, I have spent over 20 years in the Navy, and, and Colonel Wilson spent over 20 years in the Air Force. Um, and if anybody, how many of you all here have served in the military? Okay, thank, thank you. And, and what I want to say to you is, um, as a military officer, or just a military member, period, anybody who is willing to die for their country has the most integrity of anybody, of most anybody I've ever met. Money, corruption, those things don't enter the mind of people that are willing to die for their country. I will tell you that. And both Lieutenant Colonel Wilson and myself, and I'll bet the ranch, every other military member in this room here or who has ever served feels very similar to me. You don't go in the military to make money. You go in the military to serve your country. And duty, honor, country are things that you live by. And maybe the city of Atlanta could be the next one, okay? But I can tell you that there are some very strong people. Mayor Bottoms has done an amazing job of moving forward um, the procurement process. And to get back to your question, Randy, uh, David Wilson, we have a new e-procurement system which automates the procurement process and the exchange. So there's no more piles of paper. Small purchases greater than 50, but less than 20,000 will be submitted to the Department of Procurement. We no longer, I can, we can no longer at the airport buy things over $50 without going through procurement process. Could be very difficult, we're gonna give it a shot. Not to exceed aggregate amounts of $20,000 for purchases by departments per vendor per fiscal year. Competitive compensation for procurement appeals hearings officers. These are addressing certain problems that were in the system. Standardization of internal documents and templates. I think most of you know you'll submit a bid and many of them will come back non-responsive. Needs to be standardized. Everybody needs to see the same paperwork or the same computer screens uh, going forward. Uh, establishment of a new community outreach team with the department for training all appropriate city employees on the use of the uh, e-procurement and an independent audit review of all contracts involving more than a million dollars. 
So, and there's also training available to all proposers that will be available to help you get through the process. I will tell you there are more um, changes in our procurement process that will facilitate competitive bidding and make it as transparent as can be. You'll see that coming in the near future from Mayor Bottoms and uh, uh, the, our uh, Chief Procurement Officer, uh, David Wilson. So look forward to those, but uh, the administration and Mayor Bottoms are moving forward with fixing, or I shouldn't say fixing, making sure that we have the most transparent system with integrity so everybody has this level playing field. It's the same for everybody. And that's what has to be. And that's something that I was, and I've mentioned it earlier. We need to have integrity in our process, period. Thanks, Randy. Yeah. Um, so to that point of kind of improving the process, um, you know, increasing transparency and, and um, you know, leveling the playing field, there's, there's a, a school of thought that says that perhaps we should look at an independent kind of governing body that um, comes from the state that adds another layer of, of um, oversight into that process. Um, now you come from JFK where you're, you're quite familiar with authorities yes. and, and what the implications of that are on airports. Um, talk a little bit about that. What are your thoughts around, around that school of thought? So f first of all, <laughs> Uh, my first school of thought is we are we are making tremendous strides with our support from city council, through Mayor Bottoms, through our procurement process, to improve our procurement process. So first of all, I would, as a newbie here, three and a half months, I hope the state gives us a chance. I will give Mayor Bottoms a chance. Give the administration a chance. We are moving rapidly to repair the system. Now, oversight. Always, oversight is a good thing, right? You always want auditors, you always want in, in, inspector generals, and government operates in this world of oversight. Um, I have a degree in management, master's in management, and organizationally, uh, sometimes when you put a layer on top of a very successful 107.3 million people this year, last year, the most efficient airport in the world, we are 85% on time, we are number one of the lar 28 largest airports for on-time arrivals, unblemished safety record, tremendous economic engine for the region. I don't see any problems at the airport, okay? I think we have run an amazing facility. The people of Atlanta should be proud of that airport, for sure. I sure am. And I know the staff are very excited when they, what do you do at the, what the airport? I work, I, what do you do? I work at the airport. I work at Hartsfield-Jackson. Um, it's, it's an exciting place to be. So if you put a layer over us that Right now, I work directly for the COO of the city, Richard Cox, mayor, right after that. Now you're going to put an authority over it. So I, we have an issue with the PATH train yesterday, today, still. It's, it's off. It's on back on the track. We just got it back on the track. And we have TSA issues. The more layers of management that you add to a very agile, flexible, outstanding organization, I think you run a risk. I'm not telling you it's wrong, I'm just telling you, you run a risk of doing, of possibly convoluting the efficiency that is there. So I'm very happy with the structure. I think we've been incredibly successful. Every government agency, including the one I just came from, how many of you heard the um, term Bridgegate? Okay. Okay, it's a little problem they had on a bridge one, a couple days in New York called the George Washington Bridge. Again, done by an authority. That was an authority person who took control and uh, people run amok. People have issues. There are always things that happen, whether it's corporate America, government, or small business. 
there's always things that happen. You just have to learn from them, put procedures in place to fix them, and ensure that they don't happen again in the future. And I think if you do that and you're successful at it, you really don't need to, lead, to change your structure per se. Now, if you have a structural problem, well then, yeah, maybe then you need to fix it. So I will tell you an authority is not as agile as this very lean organization that we have here at Hartsville Jackson, but authorities come with other benefits, right? For sure. Okay. Um, and, and just a note to the audience, we because we got started a little bit behind schedule tonight, and I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for Q and A. Sure. I'm just going to ask John uh, two more questions, sure. if that's okay with you, and then yep. open it up to the audience. Um, so, so the first is, let's say that you maintain the, the position of general manager of Hartsville Jackson International Airport for 10 years, and you look back 10 years from now at all the things you have accomplished. What would you like to see um, in general and with respect to uh, the DBE program? Okay, so let's, let's start with DBE. Uh, I'm going to ask the raise of hands. How many are prime contractors? How many are subs or JVs? Or, ooh. All you people that just raised your hand, we'd like you to be primes. There you go. We'd like you to be primes. Why not? Why not? Grow your business. Get financially stronger. Get more skill sets. Hire better people. Give opportunity for growth. Have succession planning in your organization. Because organizations, once they're successful, need people to keep filling in. So become a prime contractor. Why not? All these people that raise their hand should become primes. It's really what it should be. You should grow into that. Because that's how this city operates. It is a place of opportunity. And Hartsville Jackson is a great place for opportunity. Uh, we have a little program of about $6.2 billion uh, in the works for our capital plan to keep us current, keep us fresh, keep us efficient, and keep us growing. So there's, there, there should be some very good opportunity going forward. Um, on, the other, on the other side, um, on my side, I would say, because not only is my side the DBE side to facilitate that with our programs and our training and our procurement and all of those things that we're doing to open the doors, but I would like to look back and say in 10 years we've never had an accident. Um, the airport is thriving. Uh, the Atlanta is still growing. And most of all, we have had no security incidents. And, and our employees have replaced me and I have been worked myself right out of a job. And I look back and I say, you know what? Young people now are doing what they need to do. They are growing into the leaders of tomorrow. And if I can look back and see somebody on my staff that's a manager now, but maybe a deputy general manager in 10 years, that is probably one of the most fulfilling things for me is to see certain people grow. And I think if you're a leader, when you look back at your life and you see, I'm getting nostalgic, I apologize, but I look back at my career in the Navy and 10 years after I left, they were the commanders of, of the Navy. And then you know you've done a good job. And when you see success, you have led people to the point where they can grow. And if I can do that, I would have a very successful career. I'm not worried about being the busiest airport in the world or any of those things. Those things are not important. It's about the leadership of the people that work there. That is fantastic. I think it is exactly that. I think that was exactly Mayor Jackson's intention um, in setting up programs like DB, so that's great to hear. Great. Um, so the last question before we, we get into uh, Q&A from the audience is, how can we, you know, if, if we want you to be successful because that's who we are, um, but also because if, if you are successful, this community is successful, theoretically. How can we support you as DBE, as AMAC? How, how can we support you in becoming successful as GM of, of Hartsville Jackson International Airport? You gotta keep doing what you're doing. 
you got to give scholarships away. You got to do the training. AMAC has to advocate for the programs. DBE, you need advocates. You need to go to Washington. You're going to lobby. You need to do all those things because guess what? Everybody else is. You need to AMAC. You need an organization to push your agenda. And your agenda is equality. And your agenda is allow me to compete. And your agenda is, I want the opportunity to be successful. And you need people to advocate for that because everybody else is fighting for that. And that's what AMAC can do. It can enable those f factors to go forward. And I think that's key. And I'm so appreciative for AMAC and everything they do.